Hey everyone, this time on Tim Talks Audio, we talk about importing song data. In Studio One and in many other DAWs, you have the ability of maybe starting your mix. You're working on a whole album or an EP or just a number of songs from the same artist, whether it's yourself or anybody you're working with, and you're in the mixing process now. You maybe have done a song and you want to be able to use that baseline of what you started in your mix with song number one and copy those settings to the other songs within the same project. Other DAWs do this and they call it some different things, but in Studio One, it's called import song data. This is something you can do in the pro version, but there are ways we can get around it with the artist version as well. So let's dive into the DAW and take a look. So here we are inside of our session and you can see this is just the files that I got from my artist. Uh, the band is called The 39 and this is the second song in an EP that I'm mixing for them. But I've already mixed the first one and I'm starting to work on the second one. But you can see there's nothing going on minus a little panning that I remembered from the first song. But I don't want to have to go in and remember all of the things that I did. I just want things to be quick and easy. So let's start with what the Studio One artist users can do. You'll need to go into your old session or the first mix of your project and whatever your inserts are, you can use the down arrow and you can come down to the bottom. We'll just scroll all the way down. And what you're going to do is store effects chain. And you are going to have to do this a bunch of times across all of your channels. And I would say, name it something appropriate. I might do something like the band name or the song name plus the instrument of the effects chain that I'm using. Now, in a song like this, there's a lot of tracks. A bunch of them might be duplicates for other things that I do. There's lots of guitars and bass and vocals. So you can see how this can be a bit of a tedious task, but it helps carry things over and speed up the process a little bit because it's all of the same sounds that you got from the first mix. But if you have Pro or are a PreSonus Sphere member, you have import song data. And this makes it so much faster and easier to get you working towards completing the project and completing the album. Of course, we want to do our keyboard shortcuts, but I'm going to show you where it is anyway. You come up to Song, and right here, Import Song Data. On Mac, it's Command-Shift-I, and on PC, that'll be Control-Shift-I. When you open this up, you then can navigate to wherever you have the other song stored. I'm gonna do that real quick. Okay, so I've navigated to where my other song files are, and I'm gonna choose the latest version because I made sure while I was working with this band, I sent them a bunch of versions and we updated things as we went along. So I'm gonna choose the most recent one, which I know is version 2.2. And when you open it up, you'll get this pop-up. It might load the song depending on how extensive your mix was in the other songs. But you'll get this window, and here you can see all of the tracks from the other song. So it shows me everything. All, this symbol right here means waveform, or this is a bus, and it tells me all of my different channels. Here's my effects because I've labeled them and I know what they are. And this allows me to do a bunch of different things. If we only look at the right hand side real quick, we're gonna ignore the left, which is where all of our tracks and buses and effects channels and everything would be. On the right hand side, it gives you your track options. Events, you would pull the events and the active events from the other song into the song you're working on. So the drum takes, the guitar takes, all things like that. I don't need that in this. It would also do the layers, all of the additional layers if you were doing layer recording. I got this from the bands who recorded with somebody else and I'm just mixing. I know that I don't have other layers. I don't need this. If I had automation happening on the other song, for any reason, I might need that to come over. But again, 
because I'm just kind of setting the baseline for this mix, I don't need this right now. I'm gonna automate it to suit this song and I kind of don't want those moves that I did on the other song. Then underneath that, media options, copy files to song folder. I don't need to do that because I already have all of my files in this session and I don't need any of the files from that session. Maybe you do and here's how you can pull that over, but right now I don't. But this is the important part and what we're really getting at today is the console options, the volume and pan, I wanna bring that over because that was my balance from the other song that the band has heard and I wanna use that as a baseline. So volume and pan, really important. Inserts, this is how you're gonna get your entire plugin chain and everything you have going on, all of the settings in those plugins, all of this is gonna carry over. And I'm also gonna pull over the sends, the amount of sends, the panning for the sends, pre-fader, post-fader, all of this is gonna get pulled in all of that data is gonna get imported into this song. And last but not least, if I was using any kind of virtual instruments, so presence or impact or any other third party VST instrument, I can bring that in as well. So I don't have anything selected on my left hand side. Now I know I'm just gonna bring in the drums to get myself going. I could do everything, but I just wanna bring in the drums. And here's another cool thing, because I use buses, what I can do is I can just click on my drum bus and everything underneath automatically gets selected. So now all of my drum tracks that are in the folder are gonna get brought over. Okay, everything I need is selected. Now all I need to do is hit okay and the process will happen. What it will not do is apply those tracks to whatever you have in this session. There is a feature in Pro Tools where you can match your tracks and if it has a relative name, that matches, you can go in and say like, oh, well, I have a kick track already because here's the audio file and I want my plugins on the kick track. But we can easily adjust for this. So let's just go ahead and bring in those tracks. And there we go. Now, yes, this is where things for import song data can start to get a little weird. And again, I'm gonna use the term tedious because what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna actually, you can see here's all of, my faders with a bunch of different plugins and stuff going on, but I'm gonna hide the console real quick. And you can see there's a bunch of empty tracks here. So what I can do now is I can start dragging and dropping all of my drums and those files to the new tracks that I just imported. So usually I would just drag the files in and start my mix and it would create the tracks. But what I'm gonna do now is I have my kick in and I'm gonna hold down shift. I need another kick and my kick out. And now I can just drag these to the other tracks and drop them on the ones with all of the plugins. I'm gonna make it real easy and I'm just gonna find my kicks. Here's my kick. I'm gonna hold down command real quick or control on a PC. Click on these three tracks, kick in, kick in, duplicate, something I did and kick out. And I'm just gonna bring these up to the top. I'm dragging them up and then put them underneath. If I open up the console, there's my three that I have selected and they have their plugins. Now I just want the audio files from the original kicks and I still have them selected and I'm just gonna drag them down. So now these tracks are empty. They don't have any plugins. I don't need them. I can right click and hide track or honestly, there's nothing going on and I don't need them anymore. I just remove them. Now my kick drums are sitting on the kick drum tracks that I imported from the other song. So my Fab filter is in here doing its thing on both my kick in and my kick out. The sends for my kick in, those have pulled over as well. And as you continue the process, all the processing from the other song is gonna get imported into the track you're working on. This is a minor step that you should do at the beginning of mixing the rest of a project. But in my opinion, it definitely speeds up the process because I just have to drag audio files around. And that's easy enough. A little bit of organization, a little bit of drag and drop, and then I'm good. I have everything based from the first song, something the band has already approved, and now I can keep working on the remainder of the project with a baseline, and then just adjust to the song as necessary. Something I didn't do before, but I'm gonna do for you right now, is a quick before and after to show you why this process makes things so much faster and easier. Here's the before drums.
And here's the after. Now all I need to do is go in, adjust my settings to suit the song, maybe clean up a couple things here or there, but now I'm already in a much better position and I don't have to start from scratch each and every time. That's all for now. If you found anything informative, please like and share the video. For booking information, check out timflansbaum.com. And if you have a question, ask it in the comments and I'll answer it in a future video. Thanks for watching.